Welcome back. In this video, we'll talk about inverters. If you are already well versed with inverters, then this video might be just a revision for you. And for those who do not have much idea about it, I will try my best to explain it. However, this video cannot replace any book. Keeping this in mind, let's get started. As we know, inverters are power converters that convert DC supply to AC. The purpose of an inverter is to be able to manipulate the amplitude and frequency of the sine wave. We achieve this conversion through switches. The idea is to turn the switches S1, S2, S3 and S4 on and off in a very specific pattern. Let us see how. Here we have a resistive load and we'll replace it with our motor later. Now if I switch S1 and S4 on at the same time and keep S2 and S3 off, node A will see VDC whereas node B will see ground. So, the voltage across a resistor is VDC and current will flow from A to B. Now, I can swap the state of switches. S2 and S3 go on and S1 and S4 are off. In this case, the voltage across the resistor is minus VDC. Hence, the current will flow from B to A. If you keep repeating this, what you will get is a periodic wave whose average is zero and it is an AC waveform. However, what we needed was a sine wave and not a square wave. One way of achieving this is by manipulating the square wave to look like this. If you just look at this figure, it will not make sense. But if you average this waveform, then you get a nice sine wave. So we need to find out two things. How to create the switching pattern? And second, how do we take its average? Let us answer the first question. Assume we have this reference sine wave. What I mean is, I want my inverter output to look like this. I will compare this sine wave to a ramp. This is a zoomed in version of the ramp. The ramp will go from 0 to 1 and will keep repeating, whereas the reference sine wave will lie between 0 and 1. And whenever the sine wave value is more than the ramp, we will keep the switch S1 on and when it is lower, we will keep S1 off. We can observe that the switching pattern Somewhat looks like what we want, but not exactly. But we'll get what we want. We will send the signal to the S1 switch of the inverter and for switch S2, we will apply the complementary state by using a NOT gate. This is because we can never have S1 and S2 on at the same time. Otherwise, it will lead to short circuiting the DC source also called as shoot through. We should always avoid the state. Now for switches S3 and S4, we will invert the sine wave and compare it with the ramp. And this switching pattern will apply to S3 and give the complementary to S4. All this will get very clear in just a moment. The node A will see the following voltage based on S1 and S2. When switch S1 is on, it will see VDC and when S2 is on, it will see 0 volt. Basically, node A follows the switching pattern of S1. Similarly, Node B will see this waveform based on S3 and S4 switching states. But what does the resistor see? Let us subtract these two waveforms to get VAB. We see that this was exactly what we needed. The next step is to take the average. So we started with two questions. How to create the switching wave pattern, which we have already achieved. And second, how do we average this waveform to get a sinusoidal output? But while answering the first question, two more questions have come up. What is this ramp and what should be its frequency and how do you generate this ramp function? Secondly, from where do you get the reference sine wave? Let us talk about the ramp. You can generate the signal at the hardware level or in the software. Since we'll be using a microcontroller for motor control application, let us talk about the software method. Most microcontrollers have an inbuilt method of generating ramp, so you do not have to worry about it. But what you should know is, what should be the frequency of this signal? Generally, this ramp signal is of very high frequency from kilohertz level to even megahertz in recent times. For motor control, this value is usually between 10 to 20 kilohertz. But why do we need such a high frequency? Let us answer that. We need to check out the frequency response of this waveform. The fundamental component of this square wave is nothing but the frequency of the reference sine wave. And for usual grid tied inverters, this would be 50 Hz or 60 Hz. But in case of motors, it varies from 0 to generally less than 1000 Hz. 
This depends on the speed of the motor and number of pole pairs. If a ramp is 20 kHz, we will have another frequency component at 20 kHz in the frequency spectrum. Definitely, there will be harmonics of the square wave also. If the ramp is very far, then we can use a simple low pass filter to remove those high frequencies and what we get is a pure sine wave. Hence, we have achieved averaging as well. Remember, averaging is nothing but a low pass filter. If the ramp frequency is near to the fundamental, then its harmonics will interfere and not get suppressed by the low pass filter. This will lead to more ripples and harmonics in the sinusoidal output that we expect. To avoid the harmonics getting mixed up, we should have the frequency of ramp at least 10 times greater than the fundamental frequency. Now, let us introduce the terms that engineers generally use. Since this waveform is switching, the frequency is also called the switching frequency. Also, these switching waveforms are called PWM, pulse width modulation. We should observe that the frequency of the pulse is constant, but what changes is the duty cycle or the width of these pulses. Hence the name pulse width modulation. Duty cycle is nothing but the ratio of on time to total period. Also, observe that if I change the frequency of reference sine wave, then I can change the frequency of inverter output. Over here, we have doubled the reference frequency and the output frequency also got doubled. And if I change the amplitude of reference sine wave, then it will reduce the fundamental component or in other words, you will get lesser output voltage from the inverter if the reference amplitude is lesser. So, using PWM, we can control the amount of voltage and frequency of these waveforms. Let us try to understand this inverter in a motor control application. Since we are talking about three phase motors, what we will do is add one more leg to the inverter. So, we have six switches and we will control all these switches simultaneously. And then connect the inverter nodes A, B and C to our motor terminals. This is also called a three phase inverter. This inverter also operates similarly. Let us link it to our control system and understand its operation. We know that a control system output produces VD and VQ. And then we convert it to VABC using inverse Clark and Park. What this is telling us is, the inverter should produce this VABC and we can divide it by VDC to normalize this value from 0 to 1. For example, if VA is 25 sin omega t and VDC is 50 volts, then reference becomes 0.5 sin omega t. It will get more clear when we will do simulation in the next video. What you should understand is, this is nothing but a reference signals. We can compare these reference signals to a ramp and we will get the switching pattern that we should apply to the switches. Ultimately, we will get the inverter to produce our desired waveform given by control output VABC. So, we have answered two more questions. We saw that the ramp is generated through microcontroller and its frequency should be 10 to 20 kHz for motor control application. Secondly, this reference signal comes from the control systems. Now, we need to see how to apply the low pass filter. To see that, we need to understand how this three phase inverter works. We will replace the motor with an RL load. Whatever we will understand about RL load will hold true for the motor also. Now there are several voltages that we can check out. Terminal voltage is the phase to ground voltage and we will call them as VA, VB and VC. Line voltage or the phase to phase voltage denoted by VAB, VBC and VCA. And finally the phase voltage or the phase to neutral denoted by VAN, VBN and VCN. We are interested in the phase to neutral voltage as this is what our load will see. Now, based on the switching patterns, this is the voltage that you will see at the terminals. The neutral voltage Vn is nothing but Va plus Vb plus Vc divided by 3. To derive this, you have to solve this circuit. Take this as an activity, it is an easy one. You just have to apply the superposition to get this answer. But the RL load will see phase to neutral voltage or VAN. VAN is nothing but VA minus VN which translates to this formula. We get this weird looking waveform but it is what it is. Also note that it is an AC voltage. Now we can apply basic circuit theory to find the current flowing in the windings. 
but we are not solving any mathematical equations here. Rather, we'll get some idea about the current through intuitive understanding. We know an inductor will not allow abrupt change in current. And we also know voltage across inductor is given by L di by dt or di by dt equal to V by L. What we can understand by this is when VAN is positive, di by dt is positive and the current will rise and vice versa when VAN is negative. But instead of just inductor, we also have the resistor that contributes to the current. Overall, the current waveform turns out to look something like this. Since the inductor did not allow abrupt change in currents, we get a sinusoidal current even though the voltage is a square wave. Thus, we have successfully converted the DC current to an AC current and we completed the task of averaging. Yes, the RL load or in our case the motor will itself do the task of averaging or low pass filter. We do not need any additional electronics to achieve a low pass filter. Let us summarize a journey from a single phase inverter to a three phase inverter with motor as a load. First, we understood that if we turn the switches on off in a particular fashion, we get AC waveforms. But since we wanted the sinusoidal output, we generated a modulated PWM that looks like this. To do this, we needed a ramp and a reference. The ramp is software generated and its frequency should be around 10 to 20 kHz for motor drives. The reference is generated by the control system. Now, since motor has three phases, we added one more leg to the inverter and it becomes a three phase inverter. The motor is equivalent to RL load and we saw that RL load sees the phase to neutral voltage. So, we arrived at the phase to neutral voltage and understood that the inductor acts as a low pass filter and does not allow abrupt change in current. Overall, we successfully converted DC current to AC sinusoidal current that we can feed to the motor. We can add all of this to a control system using one block and it is called SPWM, sinusoidal pulse with modulation. The output of this block are the signals that will decide which switch needs to turn on and off. In practice, the switches that you see are replaced with semiconductor devices which can be switched on and off very fast. We may talk about them in a future video. There are plenty of things that we have not discussed regarding inverters and you should go ahead and read some books. For the purpose of this series, it is very important to understand at least this video. In the next video, we will replace the SPWM block with SVPWM block which stands for Space Vector PWM. And we'll also talk about center aligned PWM. And lastly, we'll add inverter to a simulation in MATLAB that we have done in the previous video. See you next time.